Hello, fabulous friends and fans. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of June 29th, 2014. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. And I am back here as I am at the beginning of every season, or I have been since late 2012, to Chichen Itza. I absolutely love this place. There's such strong energy here, spiritual energy. And every time I come, I have some sort of shift. And so I love sharing it with you. And um, to me, it's just one more way that I give back to a place and a country that's given so much to me. So thank you so much to Chichen Itza. Thank you so much to Mexico as well. So this week we have, before the month ends, we are going to have some interesting conversations taking place with Neptune. And so the sun will speak very harmoniously with Neptune, what's called a trine, while Venus squares Neptune. So that's more of a conversation of tension and questions. And so to me, I find this really, really interesting because it suggests that we are thinking with eyes of faith. We are seeing things quite clearly and we're grounded in inspiration. We're grounded in faith. And yet there's likely to be, I got to say, some energy of disappointment. Now this disappointment is likely to be romantic. And for some of us, it's just going to be a feeling, right? Like, oh, maybe we didn't have like being swept away as much as we thought we were. But as I like to say very often, when these moments come along, they are here to remind us that actually reality is a lot more spiritual and also a lot more lovable than any fantasy could be. And so we should find that balance before the month ends. But again, remember that the sun is speaking in supreme harmony with Neptune. This does suggest a lift, an understanding, an absolute inspiration. And so if you have any form of writing or talking or, you know, really when you blend rationality with magic, that is when you access the best of this energy and you take your disappointments and use them to create a more ideal future for yourself. What we have happening in the early part of the month, well, July 1st, we are going to have Mercury station direct. So this is like a big yay moment for a lot of people. If you think back to what was taking place in your life on the 24th of May, 24th of May, Mercury is returning to the exact spot that he was at the 24th of May. And this is going to be really important. So this is a moment when a lot of things come together, a lot of the learning, the lessons, the intuitions, the things that have been going on sort of under the surface finally come up and you say, oh, okay, I get it. I get what the universe is trying to get me to understand, trying to get me to learn. And now we can get to implementing it in the coming three weeks until the 17th when officially even though mercury is now direct it will finish shadow as i explained a couple of weeks ago mercury does this dance and all planets do really the luminaries don't the sun and moon don't but all planets they do go retrograde from time to time and when mercury does this it's sort of a three way three path thing so mercury will walk a path stop walk backwards the same path, stop, and then walk forwards again. And so it is those points that he returns to again and again when key things happen as part of the lesson of that particular Mercury retrograde period. Remember, the universe is wise and loving. And so these moments really help us tremendously to see clearly, to make sure, check in with ourselves, that we like our direction, we like where we're going. And finally, this week, we have a very important conversation, an annual conversation that takes place between the sun and Pluto. So this is the sun standing across the sky from Pluto. Now, I think this is going to be really key and is really going to speak to what decisions we end up making as a result of the events that transpire in the early part of the week with all that Neptunian energy happening. And so this is really sort of one of those make or break, deal breaker moments. And it's likely to be reflected in another. So it's likely that another person is going to trigger us in some way to really look at what is no longer acceptable to us. And it's one of those moments when we say, that's it, I'm done, or that's it, I'm putting this behind me, or that's it, this is the change that I'm moving towards. Considering the fact that we've just had um, a new moon in the sign of Cancer, so we just had a new moon in the sign of Cancer. So this suggests to me an energy of beginnings, okay? So there's very much this lift, this energy taking place of beginnings. And so this should be part of what inspires us to move forward. So that tells me that this conversation is likely to play out with a measure of, okay, this is what I'm moving towards, this is what I'm moving forward. 
As always, I want to thank you so much for watching. It really means so much to me. I love interacting with you guys. I love your questions so much. And of course, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, my website, NadiaShaw.com, in the comment section on YouTube, all of it. Really appreciate it. And just the positive energy um, that you bring is so, so valuable to me. So thank you so much for that. Um, as you know, I have been and slowly posting videos answering your specific questions, and I'm very happy to do that. Um, and so please let me know. Keep those questions coming. Also, um, because I know sometimes uh, people ask about things that are a little bit more personal, if you would like me to have a look at your chart, please do consider a personalized horoscope where I can do just that. But one thing I really love about these videos is that they do put the energy out there. They put an omen out there. And my hope always with these videos is that you get just the omen that you need at this exact moment. I do also want to thank Designs by Perry, a friend and fan of uh, what I do. And thank you so much. Designs Designs by Perry for providing me with this fabulous jewelry. I absolutely love it. And so I'm so glad to wear it here. Spiritual energy of jewelry, spiritual place as well, celebrating this summer solstice and celebrating this moment with you. I'm going to go back into my studio for the actual horoscopes. Um, but for now, I want to say thank you so much for being here to celebrate this moment and how all this astrological stuff I spoke of speaks to you and your sign is coming up right now. Hello, fabulous friends and fans. I'm back in my studio. Thank you for being here. Hello, fabulous Aries. This week, with the way that Neptune is acting in particular, I'm looking at the fact that Venus is moving to a part of the sky that has to do with messages and communication. And you add to this the fact that Mercury will be standing still in the sky this week, right in the middle of a week or so. And I do think that the likelihood of you kind of getting a message that makes you go, whoa, what was that? What is that about? Where's that coming from? This can't have anything to do with me. That kind of message that leaves that kind of feeling is particularly likely this week. Um, but don't worry. It does look like it leads you to ask yourself some really important questions where you're looking at yourself, your value, your worth, how comfortable you feel, and especially where it comes to ultimately what you think is your purpose, what you think is the highest that you can go in this life. All of that gets an adjustment later in the week once the sun stands across the sky from Pluto. All of that does get an adjustment. The clarity will come, but just keep in mind that if early in the week you're getting some sort of message or communication that kind of leads you feeling or leaves you feeling a little uncertain, just roll with it because chances are that once the the process continues and you're asking yourself the right questions, you will find that you are really ready to experience a breakthrough and understanding of your self value, which means that that very confusing, uncertain message ends up being a great gift to you. Hello, fabulous Taurus. This week, your ruling planet Venus will be speaking with Neptune. Now, Neptune is doing a very long tour of the part of the sky for you that has to do with, among other things, your hopes and your wishes for your life. And also on another level, it has to do with friendships as well. And right now, Venus is in a part of the sky for you that has to do with the money that you earn, what it is ultimately that you give value to in terms of what you're giving, which in turn determines what comes back to you. So the value you place on what you're giving, but also it just is on a very immediate level. It is what it is that you do so that you can um, earn what you need to provide for yourself. You work on your own behalf to provide for yourself and those you're responsible for. So when we have this kind of conversation, when I look at this, one of the first things I thought was, okay, chances are that you may feel like you don't have enough in some way. And so that is going to be something you want to watch because I'm very much a believer, and I've said this before in different horoscopes, trust your circumstances. As part of the mystery, everything has a way of coming together. Everything has a perfection to it. Trust your circumstances. So if your friends want to go somewhere, want to do something, and you feel that you don't have the resources to actually do that at this time, trust your circumstances. If it really doesn't feel right for any level, including financial, trust your circumstances. Maybe that's not a place you're meant to go, or maybe that's not an event you're meant to attend. Um, on the other hand, of course, there is the element of you looking at what it is that you believe about the value of what you give, of course, and how that comes into alignment with the hopes and the dreams and the wishes that you have for your life, especially what you hope to fulfill in this life as well. And so you can take this sort of larger esoteric perspective, which will lead you 
you to, you may ask some questions, and the sun is there helping Neptune, so I do think that you should get some mental clarity, certainly, and you add the fact that Mercury will be standing still in the sky this week, supporting that element. However, uh, just keep in mind that uh, if you find yourself sort of globalizing issues, okay, if you have like one issue here where maybe you want to go to a, uh, an event with a friend um, or some event that you hope for, you want to participate in something that requires an investment, requires your money, and it seems like it's not working out, there's that one level of it, but that doesn't mean that, that doesn't have to mean anything else other than just that, that in this moment, the universe is letting you know that it's really okay, that there will be many, many other opportunities. It doesn't have to say anything more than that. It doesn't have to globalize. It doesn't have to say anything about your self-worth. It doesn't have to say anything about the success that you'll have in the future. None of that. So keep it just about what it is and trust your circumstances to lead you to the exact experiences that you need and the resources you need have a way of coming into play with that as well and trust where you are right now in your life. Hello, fabulous Gemini. Well, your ruling planet, Mercury, will be standing still in the sky in your sign. And I'm going to invite you. I know I've said this in other videos as well, the monthly videos as well. You really want to remember back. I remember I said right around the 24th of May, I reminded you in the May horoscope videos as well. Right around that time, the events that took place at that time, what happens this week is going to speak to the issues that came up at that time. And really, it looks like a process began for you right around the late part of May and led to some considerations, led to some questions, led to some wondering, led to some sort of understandings. But it's been largely a process of exploration. Well, now you get some very needed clarity and understanding into just who it is you are, what it is ultimately you're going for, what it is that matters to you, and what it is that you want to give your very valuable energy to. When a planet moves through your own sign, it is as if the energy of that planet is um, that part of your soul, because all planets, as I like to say, the planets are parts of your soul. We all have these varying parts of ourselves that have varying motivations. And when a planet is doing something significant in your sign, it literally is as if the energy that that planet represents is speaking to some shift within you, your understanding of yourself, your understanding of what matters most, what is closest to your heart, and ultimately how it is that you identify. So with Mercury there, it's about you getting that mental clarity, you getting clear on a level of mind on all of these topics. So trust what's coming forward now, because I do think that you are going to find that whatever sort of been lingering in the air since late, May it will, in some cases, rather quickly, some cases rather surprisingly, find their resolution. Hello, fabulous Cancer. Well, the sun in your sign is doing some interesting things this week. The sun will be speaking in harmony with Neptune, but then as we start the week, but then at the end of the week, or towards the end of the week, we are going to have the sun standing across the sky from Pluto. Now, this is actually an energy you've already got a little bit of a taste of. Last week, you had a new moon take place in your sign. So you've got a little bit of taste of this already, but this is really when the topics that began for you late last week, Week, now it seems to be a, a certain turning point moment where you start to understand what the message of last week's new moon was meant to be for you. And I've spoken about this in the monthly horoscope, so you may want to have a look at that again. But this really is going to be a turning point where a lot of those lessons of this new moon in your sign, this very important new moon taking place in your sign, has you really looking at yourself. And this is really, I mean, this is a conversation, as I said in the introduction, it's one of those like deal breakers, uh, deal breaker type of conversations like, okay, this is it. This is what works. This is what doesn't. Um, this is what I'm willing to do. This is what I'm not. It's that type of thing. And for you to have this taking place in your sign does suggest an element here of um, you understanding who you are and taking a stand from that place in a way that you haven't before. And so trust the inspirations and the understanding of who you are and of self that came up for you last Last week. Now it looks like your life, your circumstances, your inspiration are going to encourage you to actually live it and to actually demonstrate it. A lot of you out there are going to experience this, is going to be inspired in the context of a relationship. 
Um, but it does look like people and interactions with people are part of delivering this message to you to help you better understand who you are and just what it is that you deserve. Hello, fabulous Leo. Well, it is your ruling planet, the sun that is speaking with Neptune this week, also speaking with Pluto this week, moving through the sign just before yours. And so when I look at a configuration like this playing out, it suggests to me that there is a lot going on under the surface. There's a lot going on in the dream space for you as well. Um, very active dreams are likely this week, especially at the beginning of the week. I do think that the likelihood of you sort of having a dream where you feel like you got a divine message is very strongly indicated. And, you know, I've spoken before about um, like different examples and different cultures. And even, I mean, this goes way back. We look at um, like biblical stories about dreams and the emphasis placed on them and how they really affected um, the course of history in some cases as well. And so, I would encourage you really to pay attention to your dreams now because I do feel like you're going to get some sort of message, some sort of omen that makes your direction and what it is that you're meant to do, quote unquote, what it is you're supposed to do next, very clear. So this could be you um, seeing somebody who's passed away. That's a possibility. Um, it could be you uh, seeing yourself sort of in a sort of pre, uh, preview of something you're considering doing. And that, in turn, is going to lead you to understand what the consequences are going to be and if you like it and if you're going to go for it. And so, uh, ultimately, it is your choice, but it looks like the information, the wisdom does come forward. And then towards the end of the week, you are having to get honest with yourself, get real with yourself as to what choice it is that you are going to make. And it looks like, for some Leos out there, it may be one of those moments where it's like, okay, if I go down this road, there's no turning back. And ultimately, it's up to you to decide whether that's a road you do want to walk. Hello, fabulous Virgo. Well, your ruling planet, Mercury, will be turning direct this week, will stand still in the sky and then move direct. And so when I look at this, it does suggest that you will feel that a matter, especially where it comes to an understanding as to your highest direction, an understanding of your purpose. For some of you, this is going to be more literal. It's going to be about your career. It's going to be about what it is that you desire to accomplish, about your goals or your next goals. Those matters that have been up for consideration that may have felt a little stalled over the last few weeks now are going to get sort of a green light. It seems that you're moving forward. You have a clear understanding as to what it is actually that you are going for and why it is that you're going for it. You sort of have decided what matters to you and what's worth really paying attention to and giving your energy to. I do think also that if you've had any sort of issues with bosses or miscommunications or wondering what you're going to do about any of those relationships or mixed messages... All of that, this starting this week, should find its resolution as well for you. So you should find that at least your relationship and your interactions with higher ups are going to start to get a lot more clearer. This can also be if you've actually contacted somebody who's in some sort of position of power who you hope can actually help you go where it is that you desire to go. This can be a time when you actually hear back from them um, and you then can move forward from there. And once you understand sort of where you are in terms of uh, what it is that they can actually do and if it actually works in terms of the um, the compatibility, if you will. Do they see the vision that you're sharing or not? All of that starts to become a lot more clear for you this week. Ultimately, I do think that when it is your ruling planet that goes direct, something inside you starts to get right in a way that maybe hasn't been so fine-tuned before. So trust that process taking place for you. Allow that alteration to occur because it does look like Slowly but surely, but especially when I look at what's taking place with this particular Mercury standing still and going direct, um, it does look like a matter, especially matter happening since late May, seems to have a way of just coming together really nicely for you right about now, helping you to feel more like you. Hello, fabulous Libra. Your ruling planet, Venus, will be speaking with Neptune this week. And this particular conversation is not the easiest one. Okay, so it's not the easiest type of conversation that Venus can have with Neptune. But because of the way that these two planets kind of operate, it isn't so much about difficult or easy. It's more about clarity or confusion or uncertainty or insecurity as well. And when I look at this particular placement for you, 
it does look like, even though Venus is in a very harmonious position to yours, that is really the energy that you are going to want to emphasize right about now. Venus is in a part of the sky for you that has to do with uh, connection, with the larger world. It has to do with um, understanding sort of in a meta kind of way, understanding values, beliefs, and those types of things. And it has to do with having a deeper appreciation for just how small the world actually is, whether that's world of ideas or the actual physical world as well. And when Neptune is speaking in this particular way, being in a part of the sky that has to do with sort of the day-to-day -day ins and out work, if you will, the work sphere, um, it does look like the likelihood of you feeling that um, you wish that your day-to-day -day would come together more in line with what you believe it should be. Um, that could be one way that this manifests because it may seem like, okay, how am I going to, for some of you, it's really going to be like, okay, how am I going to take that trip if I have all this work to do, it may just come down to something like that, something that straightforward. But I do think for some of you out there, it may actually be a little bit more um, personal, a little bit more emotional as well, where it becomes a matter of, am I living my days in a way that actually support um, the worldview that I hold? If you really believe that anything's possible for you, if you really believe that if you work for something, you can achieve it, um, which is something that I certainly believe is true. If you believe that, are you actually living in, the, in a way that supports that belief. If you believe that you have something that's worthy of being shared and can be shared in a really big way and something that is all your own, maybe in a, your own business or something, are you living in a way that supports that? Are you doing what it is today to master what you need so that you can actually bring yourself increasingly in alignment with that vision that you have for your life. And so these are going to be some of the questions. I do think that because of the nature of these two planets, the likelihood of you getting some sort of clear answer, you do have help with that, certainly because Mercury will be standing still in the sky this week and begin to go direct. So you will have help getting those answers and the clarity should set in, especially as we move in the, into later and later in the week. But at least in the beginning of the week, if there's any uncertainty, um, if you wish that you had the answer, if you're sort of saying, you know, have your hand to the sky saying, you know, give me a sign already, give me a sign. Your sign is likely to be found on more subtle levels and your sign is likely to be found on just you having the realization, seeing things differently enough to understand what it is that you need to do to feel a sense of peace and balance, to feel a sense of integrity that indeed your life is being lived today to move you in the direction you most desire to go. Hello, fabulous Scorpio. This week, we have a very interesting development taking place for you with, with Mercury standing still, going direct in a part of the sky for you that has to do with financial agreements and financial talks. And so we also have Venus in this part of the sky as well. Venus communicating with Neptune in a very interesting type of conversation. And so when I look at this, I do think that if there've been any sort of long standing matters in terms of you trying to secure some funding, and this is money that has to do with grants, loans, bursaries, insurance payments, scholarships, um, benefits, loans, those types of things. If you have been trying to secure any type of funding like that and it has seemed to be sort of um, not flowing as well as you would like, you should get an answer now, but it does look like, I just want you to be a little bit careful because of this conversation early in the week. It looks like it may be that at first you get some news that seems a little bit disappointing or that you don't really know what you're supposed to do with or you don't really know how to proceed. Um, and I would say just don't worry about that, okay, because all answers have a way of finding you exactly when they're supposed to. So if that should be the case where you feel like you don't really know where it is that you're supposed to turn or you're not really sure how you feel about the information or decision that finds you now, don't worry. The chance of you actually being able to clear things up, whether it's through an appeal or whether whether it's through just asking some questions, is very, very strongly indicated. And you should find that by the time we get you to the end of the week, and especially once we get you into next week, it looks like 
at least from a financial perspective, things start to really start to fall into place for you in a way that you like very much, especially where it comes to dealing with any type of financial institutions. If there have been any kind of uh, snags or delays, you can expect them to begin to resolve themselves towards the end of the week and into the next. So don't let the start of the week fool you. Just because in the start of the week it looks uncertain, that doesn't mean that things won't work out perfectly well for you. Hello, fabulous Sagittarius. This week, we have Venus and Mercury in your opposite sign. And Venus will be having a very interesting conversation with Neptune, as I spoke of in the introduction. And Mercury will be standing still in this part of the sky and begin to travel forward. Now, what happens in your opposite sign tends to denote uh, matters relating to partnership and matters relating to love. All of these tend to be highlighted when we have activity taking place in the opposite sign to yours. So really, it's like you, your sign, you're looking out into the world. Your opposite sign is what you attract back towards you. And in particular, this tends to play out with people. And so for the overwhelming majority, I do think this is going to play out in the context of love, where if there have been any sort of delays where it comes to your partner, um, any kind of confusion as well, any decisions that were made as well, um, it looks like now you sort of start to see things a lot more clearly, especially as we get you towards the end of the week. But I do think that at the beginning of the week, chances are that you may have this feeling of being so disappointed by partnership or by a partner, whether it's in love or in business. But because of the nature of the conversation between Venus and Neptune that would suggest that, I do think that it's best to wait before you sort of think, oh my God, what did this person do? Instead of doing that, sort of acknowledge if there's any feelings of disappointment, if there's any confusion as well, acknowledge that for yourself. And yet I would say to you, just wait. As you get towards the end of the week, I think you're going to find that a resolution happens that actually pleases you very much. And it does look like if there have been any miscommunication or any information let uh, that wasn't made clear to you, any snags that were there in regards to uh, what your partner is going through, and especially where it comes to any paperwork that has to do with the two of you together with partnership, um, it looks like you start to find that clarity, you start to find that understanding of exactly what it is that you can do to help things move forward with greater clarity and a greater sense of confidence as well. And the confidence, by the confidence, I mean that the confidence that you know what it is you need to, to proceed with a sense of clear understanding as to who it is that you are with and what it is the two of you are actually looking towards together. Hello, fabulous Capricorn. This week we have Pluto moving through your sign. As I've said many times, Pluto's making this very slow move through your sign. It started late, late last decade, into this decade, into the next decade as well. So really a once-in-a-lifetime transit, once-in-a-lifetime journey through your sign. And Pluto will be standing across the sky from the sun. And actually, the more accurate way to put it is because the sun moves faster. The sun will be standing across the sky from Pluto in your sign. And this happens once every year. And when this happens, it really speaks to the heart of you when Pluto is moving through your sign. And it really speaks to a deep understanding as to where it is that you are ready to be reborn, in a sense, change course, in a sense, and for some of you, really transform some key part of your understanding of yourself, and in particular, your understanding of how it is that you are going to engage other people. And for some of you, this is going to be how you engage sort of the larger world, other people. For some of you, this is going to be about partnership how it is that you're actually going to engage your partner, how it is that you're going to understand love and what it is that's meant to be for you. I do think the likelihood, and I would have spoken about this in the monthly horoscopes, the likelihood of you actually attracting an experience that sort of it can lead you to question many things about yourself right down to the core of you, right down to your identity is very strongly indicated. 
And I'm going to be honest with you, as also I would have mentioned this in the monthly horoscopes because it's just so, um, it's such a potent symbol. The likelihood of you being attracted to somebody that maybe is taboo, maybe not so smart to be attracted to, um, or maybe in some way represents um, the possibility for tremendous change as well, is there. But also, it could be somebody who represents, as I said, taboo. It could also represent somebody who ultimately maybe isn't such a good idea, maybe is forbidden. Maybe you don't know as much as you're, you feel that you do on a level of intensity. It is sort of like this draw towards another person that is possible for some Capricorns out there. So it's going to be up to you to find that balance, to decide. It's always up to you. It's always your choice to decide how it is you're going to approach the sky. But really, it's going to be up to you to decide if this actually works for you, if this is a direction you want to go in. Um, the chances of it being uh, presented as a one-off experience is possible as well. And so, um, but then again, you did just recently have a new moon in your opposite sign, which does denote a fresh new start where it comes to love as well. And so um, I would just encourage you to be open, to understand that things change and to understand that ultimately there is some sort of truth, some sort of honesty that is trying to come forward. And ultimately it has to do with your understanding something about yourself that will lead you to change very deeply and understand who you are on a level of your identity differently. And so as you engage the world and as you engage other people, try to approach it all as learning, try to approach it all as a gift. And I think that you're going to find as you are doing this, you're better able to, as you approach your life with a willingness to learn, you're better able to make sense of whatever emotions come up for you, whatever intensity comes up for you. And you're able to actually utilize that to your advantage. And one thing very much to your advantage is to make your choices consciously and to have peace with the choices that you make. Hello, fabulous Aquarius. This week we have Mercury standing still in the sky and going direct. And what we also have happening for you is Venus in the same part of the sky uh, speaking with Neptune. And so the particular placements of these have to do with, on the one hand, this has to do with romance and the feeling of love. Yes. It usually has to do with um, sort of the joy you experience with another person. And there's also another element of this that has to do with creativity and your creations. And for some of you that might manifest in terms of projects, for others, this might manifest in terms of your children. And I'd like you to think back to what was taking place um, in the late part of May, particularly around May 24th, because it does look like issues, concerns, ideas, considerations that arose around that time now are going to find their resolution, are going to find their clarity. And so what I am seeing for you is a very strong possibility uh, for some of you, if there were any sort of kinks in a relationship or in relating to somebody, whether that's a partner or just somebody in your sphere, somebody you're considering deepening a partnership with, um, it looks like Whatever it was that kind of came up that might have been really subtle for some, there, it might have been more dramatic. Now it's sort of like you understand what it was that that was about, what was happening within you, what was happening with that other person. And from there, you can make a clearer choice as to where it is that now you desire to go. So it looks like it's sort of beginning a process of resolution as to what began or was decided or you thought you understood um, just a few weeks ago. For those of you in the midst of a creative project, um, if you find yourself if you found yourself kind of hitting a bit of a snag, now you should feel that things are st finally starting to move forward. And uh, for those of you with children, if you found that there was some news that came up regarding your child, um, you weren't really sure how best to proceed, now the answers do come. But keep in mind, because of the particular conversation between Venus and Neptune at the start of the week, it does look like... Um, before you get to that clarity, it's like one final burst of facing disappointment, facing confusion, not really being sure, wishing things were different, um, feeling like the reality is disconnected from the dream, um, feeling like that maybe there was a lot of hope and 
uh, you still have that hope, but you also are thinking, maybe I'm just kidding myself. I don't know what I'm doing here. All that part, all that sort of conversation, it's almost like a purge that needs to happen. And all of that seems to be coming out because you have the faith, you have the belief. And yet at the same time, uh, you're asking yourself these questions and you're thinking, well, I don't think this is soulmate material, whether it's soulmate on the level of soulmate expression in terms of your project. I don't think this is really meaningful. I don't think this really matters to me. I don't think this is going to fulfill fulfill me. I don't think this is going to help me self-actualize. Um, or in a partnership as well, I don't think that this is meaningful. I don't think this is what I'm going for. Or in terms of your children as well, I don't think this is the answer. I don't think that what solutions I'm being offered right now are actually going to be the thing that are going to help my child. If any of this is coming up for you in the beginning of the week, just don't worry. Because of the particular conversation, the nature of these planets, while you have that faith, just stay grounded in that faith because it looks like by the time we get you to the later part of the week all of that confusion and certainty starts to subside for you and you're better able to have a clearer understanding of what it is you can do what it is that did happen before and how it is now that you can move forward Hello, fabulous Pisces. This week, Neptune in your sign will be speaking with the sun and with Venus as well. Now, Neptune has been called the higher octave of Venus. And so when these two planets kind of get together, and particularly in this kind of conversation that astrologers call a square... And this particular conversation is one that denotes motivation, it denotes tension, it denotes a call for action. And yet, because of the nature of these planets, I mean, Neptune and Venus are not really like action oriented. <laughs> Venus, when you see her in like art, she's sitting back, um, she's letting good things come to her, someone else is feeding her grapes and so on. Um, she believes that she's worthy to receive. With Neptune being about the seas, well, it's not very permanent, is it? Yes, the sea can create great change. However, it does it in a way that ultimately flows, right? It's not about being all active and pointed. It's about trusting the flow and allowing that to create great changes in the world. So when these two planets get together like this, it does tend to denote a time of uncertainty, of confusion, um, of wishing things were more ideal, of feeling like the reality isn't really matching this, you know, very high aspiration that you might have had. And yet the sun is there speaking in harmony with Neptune in your sign. And the sun is very active and speaking in supreme harmony as well, which happens about twice a year when we get this type of conversation between the sun and Neptune. And so when I see something like this happening, it suggests to me that you know what it is that you need to do. You are clear on what action you can take. You are clear on what you can do to actually empower yourself. Your job is to trust it. Your job is to be in that space where you have faith that you trust, you understand what's going on, and you know yourself enough to know what it is that you need to do. Don't get caught up in an energy that ultimately is just going to pass, that energy that has to do with the confusion and the uncertainty and what ifs and why can't things be more perfect, why can't things be more great. They are exactly what they need to be. And so any sort of letdowns, any kind of disappointments, acknowledge them and then focus. Focus your energy on what you can do to move yourself towards more ideal circumstances. If you do that, you will Will literally find yourself taking action that is not only one that fulfills you, but actually does move you in a direction that you like very quickly. Well, I will stop there. Thank you so much to everybody out there. It'll be a great week. Enjoy. Thank you for watching. It'll be a great month. Be fabulous and enjoy.